Hello guys and welcome to another Applied Energy 62 tutorial video. Today we will talk about the pattern provider block. This is a quite new block. We used to have the interface, this one, item interface, instead of pattern provider. But these days the functionality of the old interface is split into a simplified interface and a dedicated pattern provider. On the positive side, you will barely notice any difference. You will use it exactly as you used an interface before and for the interface, well, for the rest of the functions, you will use the interface as you did before. So in this pack, I still have a few bugs. Uh, more info about that in the video description. But I'll go through a few examples of how it looks using the provider, the pattern provider, and the interface with examples from old videos. All right, let's begin with my current favorite when it comes to auto crafting processors. I've built this before in a dedicated video using an interface, but in this build, I'm using the provider instead. It works like this. We have processors, logic, engineering, and calculation. If I order a few of them, we can see them turning up over there in the auto crafting. They will automatically jump over here in the different inscribers and we'll get processors back. Just very quickly how this works. Uh, the pattern provider has the pattern. Redstone dust, diamond silicon. I have covered this before, so I will rush through it and you can check the old video for more details. But the pattern provider will have this processing pattern made up here, of course, using redstone and then your uh, silicon and whatever material you use diamond for engineering, certain quartz crystal for the calculation and then gold for logic. Only those three base ingredients and then the pattern provider will receive all the items and push them into this interface. Interface receives, distributes items accordingly and will push the items back through an export bus from here, this storage bus, and then export bus back into the pattern provider. And that will give us the items back to the main network. So this build is exactly the same, except for this block. Interface to receive provider to provide items and keep the pattern, but we can push the items back. So that's pretty good. Also, when we look at this old classic auto crafting uh, structure, I don't know what to call it, but we have four pattern providers uh, as, and as many molecular assembler. Each of these will interface to three assemblers. So it means that if we have co-processing units, we can do several at the same time and Everything will be faster, but we can push the recipe, for example. Uh, which one is a good example here? A stick. So this stick will be crafted in this one, this, and this. And then the, the molecular assembler will push the result back into the provider. And they are all connected, so they will come back into the network. Let's demonstrate by crafting 300 sticks. We can see that we are crafting. And we had it over here, so they will jump into all of these assemblers. And back to the provider, back to the network, and we are almost done. No need for co-processing units in this build, but if you have several steps, for example, if you're crafting 
a wooden tool that requires several steps, then things might be faster if you distribute your patterns accordingly. If you have all in the same, I don't think it will ma make any difference, but if you then distribute them smart, then it will be more efficient. So this one looks the same as well. And the pattern provider doesn't really have much. We can set priority. I haven't really explored when the priority for this block is important. But the blocking mode is that when we push the items, for example, when we have the redstone, diamond and silicon, we can ignore the contents or we can do not push if the next block is busy. So let's move on with the interface now. And well, there are a few ways to use it. Typically, it's the bridge between two networks. So you can see here, I have an inter interface on the left side. That's this big network. I could have called them, but there's a line here that separates these. So in here, I can actually see that we have lots of wooden tools and we have, you know, various stuff. But if I remove, uh, let's see, we can remove that one. We no longer have all these wooden tools. Okay. So let's place them back. So the wooden tools are actually over here. And you can see that we have oak log, stone and stone bricks. But if I cut this network, we have none of them. So what's going on here is let's take it one by one and begin with a simple one. Here it's just a chest with oak logs. I'm exporting a logs. Uh, so they will be uh, with this storage bus, we can see them. All right, and that's the basic way. So all these are over here. We also have interface to storage bus and here interface to storage bus. And I configured them slightly different. This interface has no config at all. I'm just placing it here. I have a storage bus here. And this combination means that I will be able to see the contents of that network. So all these tools are over there. But here I have redstone, gold and stuff. And I can't see that from here. The difference is that this interface is configured to have with a crafting card, stone and stone bricks. And if we disconnect all of that, you can see that I have no stone bricks and I have 192 stone. Connected together, we have slightly more stone and 32 stone bricks. So th this is, pr <laughs> it's pretty funny. Um, you can configure the interface to keep things in stock, like I do here. If we disconnect that part, you can see that I can't, I can't actually see them. 32 and then the 250, whatever it was, 256, I guess. I can't see them anymore because I could see them only through this network. Really messy. So I, I don't recommend this solution, but both have, both are uh, actually useful in, in various uh, scenarios. So let's take it one, one more time. Here, 64 stone, 32 stone bricks. If I extract the stone bricks from here, Remember that they are not in this network. I can only see them through this storage bus. So I can, re I can remove them, place them down here, and it will fill up directly because this one will restock. Crafting card will order them. The fun part is that because I connected this storage bus to this interface without any configuration, I can see everything in this network. 
Whereas here, I can only see things in this network that I have configured in this interface. So the 32 that I see here are actually these ones that I can see through the storage bus and this interface coming from this side. A bit advanced and easy to make mistakes. I don't think this is very useful to do this as a double, but it's not unusual that you have a subnet like this and you have a dedicated network for perhaps bees or whatever that is self self-sustained, so to say. And then you want to reach parts of it or everything from the main network, but from this network, you don't want to reach everything in the main. And then, then this method is what we'll use. Storage bus interface, I can see everything. Auto crafting is not working well in with this method though, I should warn you about that. However, this is a different way to use the interface and the crafting card to always keep things in stock for this, uh, this network alone. So just a storage bus directly to the interface. I can see that I have 64 of each processor. We can see them here as well. And if I were to remove or reduce up, let's say we craft some annihilation cores, 20 of them. We will need 11 processors, uh, 22, yeah, 11, start. You barely had time to see that we were crafting over here because it's the normal recipe somewhere. But we used the logic ones and they are in the interface. We want to restock them. So that's automatically ordered from this setup. Pretty neat. Kind of like it. Okay, I don't think there is much more to cover for this uh, for this video. Just the pattern provider in itself is not really that interesting, but it replaces some of the use that we used the interface for before. And now the interface is a bit simplified, but still as powerful. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope this was understandable. Leave a comment if you have any questions and uh, I hope I'll see you in the next one. Take care and bye-bye.